We're back, and joining me now is Willie Brown. He's the former Democratic mayor of San Francisco. Hillary Shelton, the Washington Bureau Director and Senior Vice President for Advocacy and Policy for the NAACP. And Congressman G.K. Butterfield, he's a Democrat from North Carolina, the first vice chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, and, and Mr. Mayor, I don't know if we still call you Mr. Mayor after, after you've left office, but I'm going to call you Mr. Mayor. And, and I, I wonder, I, I look at the, uh, the, some of the statistics we just showed there about the number of African-American senators um, in history, and it, it strikes me there's sort of a disconnect here, where if you look at the House, You've got like 45 African-American members of the House right now, about 10 percent of the House, a little more than 10 percent. And in all of history, just as we say, nine, nine black senators, it, it seems to me there's a problem, in, a pipeline problem here with getting African-Americans who are sort of in the political game and in position to move up in, in the House. They're not getting chances to run for the Senate or, or even for the governorship. What do you think that disconnect is all about? Well, that disconnect is all about racism, basically, in America plus the absence of opportunities in various states where the population should be able to be supportive. The political parties and the resources have just not been there behind African-American candidates. Well, it, it, Congressman uh, uh, Butterfield, I wonder if, if you can elaborate that on, uh, on that a little bit, because I, I think you've been, ele you've been in the House now for, for close to a decade. I, I wonder what your experience is, because you represent, um, uh, and I've, I've noticed this too, just in, in covering politics, uh, it tends to be the sort of the donor class, when you, when you talk to the donor class of, of the Democratic Party, um, and, and they're looking at statewide openings, a lot of times they look at candidates from districts like yours, which are sort of voting rights districts, districts with heavily you know, African-American populations, and, and they, do, they will sort of say, we don't think candidates from these districts can and win statewide. They say the districts are too liberal. They say the districts are not representative of, of statewide population. They say in many cases the districts aren't economically prosperous. The, the candidates don't have a lot of money. Is that something you found, those attitudes? Have you come, uh, come up against those attitudes in sort of the, the state political establishment in North Carolina? Well, thank you, Steve. It is true that I represent a voting rights district in eastern North Carolina. Uh, the district was created as a result of litigation under the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And so we have two African-American members of Congress from North Carolina, Congressman Mel Watt and myself. Uh, but let me thank you for recognizing uh, Senator Cory Booker. I was on the Senate floor today when Senator Booker took the oath of office. It was certainly an historic moment, and congratulations go out to the people of New Jersey. Uh, and, and, and Hillary, what, what would you say, if we're looking at that, that disconnect we're talking about, what is the key for, let's say, an ambitious African-American politician right now, maybe who is a, a member of Congress, maybe who is a state legislator, who is looking to make that, that jump to the statewide level, to run for the Senate or to run for governor? Because we say the track record for African-Americans at the gubernatorial level, really no different than the senatorial level. What is the advice to a candidate? How do you sort of break through? And what needs to change to make those candidates more viable in the eyes of sort of the political establishment? Well, the opportunity to bring forth their ideas. One of the biggest challenges in times gone by is that we didn't have a lot of the new media that we have now. Keep resonating your ideas, bring them forward, recognize the obstacles that are still there, and continue to work to make sure they don't prevent you from getting your message out, getting out into the field, and seeing what the role of government actually is. One of the biggest challenges as we watch Democrats versus Republicans versus others begins with what the role of government is and what the American people expect first of that role and then secondly of those that will serve them in, in these elected offices across the country. You know, so, something else I wonder is if we're, we're sort of going through and living through almost, almost a turning point here. I can think of um, when the Voting Rights Act was enacted and, and when majority and minority districts were created, and there was sort of a proliferation of African-American representation in the House. I, I think there were, there were a lot of the members who were elected back then. You think of like Charlie Rangel from New York, who never thought of trying to move up and never thought of trying to run statewide. They thought instead of making their life in the House, you know, I'm going to be here for 10 terms, for 20 terms. I'm going to chair a major committee. I'm going to, you know, build up the seniority. You know. Uh, uh, Mayor Brown, do you, do you think that the ambition now uh, of the new generation sort of of African Americans in Congress, do you think the ambition now is, is, is less in, inside the institution and more about, hey, I want to become a senator, I want to become a governor, I want to go national? Absolutely. I think Cory Booker's success evidences that. There have been other occasions when persons have tried it. Harold Ford tried it in Tennessee. He didn't quite make it. And there will be others who will follow that lead, and they will be doing something other than insider politics. The political parties, however, must embrace the concept in order for that person to win. And, and, and Congressman Butterfield, maybe, maybe you can elaborate on that point. So the, the political parties must embrace the concept. Where, how far along do you think the Democratic Party is, and in, in Republicans for that matter, but how far along do you think the political parties are in embracing that concept? 
Well, certainly the Democratic Party is the party of choice for African Americans. Uh, uh, African Americans are not blindly loyal to the Democratic Party. Uh, we, we support the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party has a progressive agenda. Uh, but talking about the 1965 Voting Rights Act, that, that, that law was enacted, uh, first of all, because of the literacy test. And once we got rid of the literacy test, and African Americans began to register to vote in large numbers. But because of racially polarized voting, particularly in the South, African American candidates had, had difficulty uh, getting elected. And so the Voting Rights Act was enforced. Lawsuits were, were filed all across the South. And because of that, uh, we now have minority districts, and now African Americans are serving in the Congress. All right. I want to thank former mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown, Hillary Shelton from the NAACP, and Congressman G.K. Butterfield of North Carolina. Thanks for joining us tonight. And that is all in for this evening. Chris will be back tomorrow. You can catch my show up with Steve Kornacki weekends at 8 a.m. Eastern time. The Rachel Maddow show starts right now. Good evening, Rachel. Good evening, Steve. I love it every time you host anybody's show. It's great to have you on at primetime. Yeah, it's oh, great thank to have you. you. It's nice of you to say. Thanks.